Hello, and welcome to today's live video. Today we're talking about the gallbladder. You got a little sneak peek just then before I managed to scroll up. Today we're talking all about the gallbladder, how you can take care of it, what you can do to help your gallbladder heal, and, and this has been very requested, what to do if you don't have a gallbladder. Because not having your gallbladder is not the end of the world. There is a lot you can do to help your body and support it. And there are some things you really need to make sure that you're doing. So... I'm going to make sure I cover all of those topics in this video so you're going to know exactly what to do. Obviously, I'm going to try and help you not have your gallbladder removed if, if possible. But if it's already gone, then, well, it's gone. Nothing, you, can't, you can't get it back. You can't grow it back or anything. So I'll help you figure out what you can, what you can do about that. So for us to, to, for us to do this, for us to talk about this, we have to look at what these things are, what they do how they function, how they break, and what we can do to help them. So let's start right at the top. So we're going to start with the liver. The function of the liver, in the, the liver has so many different jobs, but in this video, we're going to be looking at the connection with the gallbladder because this is the spotlight today is on the gallbladder. So the real function here is the liver is what produces the bile. So this is where the bile is actually made. The gallbladder, the only real function of it is to hold it. It stores it. So it's kind of like you can hear in the word bladder so like the same way like your kidneys make urine but your bladder is what holds your pee before you go to the toilet it's exactly the same here so your liver makes the bile but the gallbladder holds it it stores it it holds it until it's actually ready to be released until you need it and you'll need it for these functions here so you've got three three primary jobs you've got emulsified fat kill pathogens remove toxins and waste so the first job, emulsify fats, it's basically, what, what this means is if you were to get a jar of coconut oil and pour it in a cup, and then you were to get some water and pour it in a cup, you would see that you've got two different levels of oil on the top and, and the water. So they're, they're separate. They will not mix. And the function of a bile, of bile in this case of emulsification, is to mix these things. So the the fat can dissolve in into the liquid. And this is necessary because you cannot absorb any of these fats that you eat and, and the fat soluble nutrients that are included in them until they are dissolved. There are a few exceptions, but a general rule of thumb, you cannot absorb fats unless they're emulsified first. So this is one huge function here. Second, it works to kill pathogens. And the example here is, so we just we just use the example of the of the fat and the water. And that comes up a lot when you're like, washing dishes, for example. You use soap. So soap in this case works as an emulsifier. But what other functions does soap have? So we don't just use it to clean grease. We use it to wash our hands and protect us from getting like bacteria and viruses and it cleans things. So in this case, it the the, the mechanism is basically most often is the the fat, the the soap is able to basically just rip parts of the fat off of the off the bacteria and stuff. So most bacteria and viruses and stuff, they've got some kind of fatty component to them. And the soap in this case rips them apart. And the same thing is happening inside your gut. So if you've got like SIBO or you've got parasites, or you've got some kind of fungal dysbiosis, or you've got some kind of imbalance in what's happening inside your digestive system, making sure that you have healthy bile is going to be super important in the same way that you would wash your hands to kill viruses and bacteria. You need to wash your intestines to kill viruses, bacteria, yeast, parasites. And if you don't have healthy bile, you're not going to be, you're not going to be doing that. It's just, you're just not going to be doing that mechanism, which means you're going to get sick, sick somehow. And finally, we've got remove toxins and waste. So toxins, so the reason I made a, di a distinction here between toxins and waste is toxins, I'm, gonna, I'm thinking they're more sort of things that come from outside of the body. So this can be, we're going to cover this a little bit further down, but these are different types of things you may be exposed to in your environment. And waste, these are more sort of things that your body is producing itself. Or So this could be like, this could be like hormones when you've finished using them, your, your body packages them up, packages up these old hormones, packages them in bile and gets rid of them. Does the same for like old oxidized cholesterol, like it's supposed to come out in, in this mechanism. So it's toxins that you're exposed to in your environment, but it's also just waste that you just accumulate from being alive. You know, you, being alive, your body produces waste products and some of that comes out in the bile. So over here, I've got this little section, Gallbladder removal means something here went seriously wrong. So if you have had your gallbladder removed already, then you there's going to be some serious work that needs to be done, be done probably on one or maybe all of these because 
there was probably at least one of these. Either you had pathogens, you weren't emulsifying fats properly, or you had accumulations of toxin and waste. You probably have at least one of them that caused the, the gallstones or whatever caused you to have your gallbladder removed in the first place. But now that you've had it removed, it's going to make these things worse. So you'll have a harder time emulsifying fats, you'll have a harder time killing pathogens, and you'll have a harder time removing toxins and waste. So one of those is probably the root cause of why the gallbladder was removed in the first place or the, 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 that caused you the symptoms to have the gallbladder, gallbladder removed. But now these are issues that need to be addressed as ongoing things that having your gallbladder removed is actually going to perpetuate and make worse. And I've got some diagrams here. You don't need to be able to read the text. I know it's a little bit blurry. It's just for the images, just so you can have an idea of the, of the anatomy of, of, of these organs. So as you'll be able to see here, You've got these little, these little green kind of like, they kind of like they look like little veins. These little like tubes inside your liver. This is where the bile is made in the liver up here, and then it comes down into this, into this little tube, and it will start trickling into into the small intestine. But there, there's a little valve here on this on this little part, just just here. There's there's a little circle here. We've got okay, we've got a little heart. So there's a little valve here. And we're gonna we're gonna talk about that that little valve in a little bit. But what would usually happen is the bile collects down here, and then once it reach it, once it's built up, it starts to then flow into the gallbladder and it's and it's stored and it's concentrated as well. So it actually gets more and more powerful. So in in what's basically happening is the gallbladder is like taking the it, it's concentrating it down. So the substances that the body uses to emulsify are being concentrated in this in this process. So if we come down here, this is a diagram of what the gallbladder looks like and what it looks like when it's when it has become filled up with stones and what causes gallbladder attacks so when you you can have all of these all of these gallstones over here and they're not actually really causing you a problem when you're having like a gallbladder attack it's because the stone is getting stuck somewhere in this tube while it, while the body's trying to expel it so imagine this this bladder is like a little sack and every time you eat some fat or you stimulate a bile release the body squeezes this this little sack and tries to squeeze all of that concentrated bile out of the sack. If there's stones in there, especially if there are stones that are bigger than your tubes, they can get stuck and that can cause problems. So fixing this is, is a, a we, we have to do several things here. We have to reduce the size of the stones. We have to improve the quality of the bile. We have to stimulate the release to happen more, but we're gonna, we're gonna get onto that. So what causes them to form in the first place? First of all, poor bile flow. If you aren't stimulating the gallbladder to contract frequently, then it's going to stay in the in the gallbladder and it's going to concentrate and concentrate and concentrate and get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and it can get so strong that it forms into stones because when it when something is concentrated so much so you think you keep removing all of the like the moisture out of it it concentrates down and down and down until it gets into a solid and that's basically what's happening here in, in these stones so with poor poor bioflow you're getting low or poor stimulation so this means Either you're not eating enough healthy fats, so it's not stimulating the gallbladder to release, or you're eating poor quality fats, which the body is struggling to digest. So it doesn't want to trigger this release. It doesn't really want to absorb these. This can also, also be because of excess toxicity. So as the, as the bile is, as the, the liver is making the bile and it's packaging these toxins up inside, inside the bile, this bile now coming into the gallbladder, gallbladder starts to concentrate. And if there's toxins here, you're concentrating these toxins down as well, which can exacerbate this inflammation. So you can see there's like a little red aura behind these stones and that's inflammation of, of the gallbladder. This can be because of the increased concentration of toxicity that's occurring in this area. And we've also got gut dysbiosis. So this is a twofold problem because the gut can become a source of toxicity, which means your gut is actually producing toxins which cause the gallstones to form but also you've got a problem on the other end where if you don't have the right microflora you won't recycle your bile properly so bile is actually very expensive for your body to make it's probably one of the most expensive substances that your body has to produce so it actually recycles bile a lot so when your body releases this bile it's supposed to bind with a fat and from that point, it's absorbed, it goes to the liver, the liver takes the fat off and then uses that biomolecule again. And it can use a biomolecule again up to nine times. So the recycling rate of bile is extremely high. But if you don't have the right kind of flora that help with this, 
binding and unbinding process. If you don't have organisms present in the gut to help decouple toxins from the bile, so if this, this toxic bile is coming out and you don't have the right organism to help the bile release the, the, the toxin that's in it to then be escorted out through the bowel, the, the bile molecule is reabsorbed and it's still containing this toxicity. So now that bile, you've basically reintoxicated yourself and, and that's bad, but what's even worse is now this bile molecule is already full of toxins. So the liver can't put more toxins in it. So then you start to accumulate them inside your body. So it's this kind of like double vicious cycle. It's, it's, it can be really, really tricky. And finally, we've got resentment, emotion. So there is an emotional root cause here. Well, there, there can be. I would say more often than not, this is this is true. This is the case. I actually truly genuinely believe now that there is it is impossible to have a physical health problem without there being also some kind of dysfunction mentally and emotionally too. And there's a very strong connection between the gallbladder and resentment. And you can see this kind of in a metaphorical sense as take anger and take anger that is concentrated and concentrated and concentrated and concentrated. It becomes resentment over time. And that's what's happening with gallstones. You've got bile and it's concentrated and it's concentrated, it's concentrated, and then it's gallstone. So there's a, there's a parallel there. But we'll talk some more about that uh, in a little bit. So what do we do? How do we fix this problem? Now you understand a little bit about gallbladder, the liver, and everything that's happening here, let's actually talk some solutions. So first we wanna to remove toxicity as much as possible. And the most common toxins I find are mold. It's not actually mold itself, it's the mycotoxins that they produce. Mold, generally not even half as big as a problem as the mycotoxins, but the mycotoxins are very dangerous. Metals, so the most common ones here are the amalgams. So the mercury in, in the teeth, they're very common. Or if you've had some kind of uh, environmental exposure. Plastics, so this can be plastic clothing, plastic bottles, plastic cookware, Teflon. Um, if you're if you're wearing like nylon or acrylic clothing, you're sweating in them, you're absorbing plastics, your body has to excrete them, it does it this way. And pesticides, so eating organic is helpful. Even if you eat organic, you're still being exposed to some. You don't have to be perfect, you know, you just have to be aware and do what you can. So just minimize what you can. Like if you're exposed to some, some plastics and some pesticides, but you're really diligent at making sure that you're not being exposed to mold and mycotoxins. You've got a clean mouth. Your body's pretty good at adapting. Just make sure you support it. And we're going to talk about how to support it a little bit further down. So second, bile support. So these, these are, we're going to work differently for different people, but these are just some suggestions you might want to try. So a bile supplement, we're going to talk more about how to do this properly a little bit, little bit below. Tudka, this is kind of like a raw ingredient that your body can use to create new bile. So it can really help to thin the bile out if it has become very thick so if you do have like this gallbladder sludge where it's concentrated a lot but it hasn't formed stones yet Tudka can help to thin that out to allow that to come out be recycled by the gut flora be reabsorbed and make make healthy bile again and finally digestive enzyme especially lipase so i would generally go for like a broad spectrum enzyme that's got the protease amylase lipase but it's especially lipase that's important in the context of the gallbladder because the lip lipase is the, the enzyme that we use to digest and absorb fat but we don't just use it here we use it in all of the other areas of our body we use it in our liver we use it in, in our brain we use it in loads of different places so lipase can really help with actual liver function itself which is going to help you to produce high quality bile too third we've got balance the microbiome so we've got probiotics so you'll, you'll know I love the brand Custom Probiotics D-lacto-free formula to start with, upgrade to the 11-strain formula when, you, when you've finished the bottle, if, you, if you're handling it. If you want to know more about probiotics, I have another video, go on YouTube. William, you know the drill by now. William Dickinson, probiotics, you'll find something. Fermented foods. One of the best ones here is apple cider vinegar. Again, we're going to talk a little bit more about that towards the end, but any fermented foods are going to be really helpful here. So this is kefir, this is kimchi, sauerkraut, literally anything is going to be good and variety so color flavor aroma preparation when you think variety you might think like just different colors but different preparations of food also change the contents of the food and they're going to make it more bioavailable to different organisms in the gut so make sure that you are having lots of different kinds of foods lots of different colors and flavors and you're preparing them in different ways you know if you always have your green beans steamed try frying them try roasting them try having some raw, you know, try some different things, you know, whatever it is you're eating, try different preparations of it and try different things as well. I challenge you, go into your supermarket, try and find one food that you don't know what the hell it is and try and figure out how to eat it. That's always a good challenge and it makes life kind of fun, you know, because you can get so much cool stuff in a supermarket nowadays. Go see what you can find. 
four, stimulate flow. So the best way we can do this is to increase our fat intake, particularly of saturated fat. Saturated fat is the form of fat that the body actually likes. It's what your body stores. So when you, when you gain fat, your body is storing fat as a saturated fat. It is the most stable form of fat. It's the preferred fuel source of fat. Just saturated fat is not a bad thing. If you're worried about it, another video, go type William Dickinson cholesterol. We'll explain to you cholesterol is not a bad thing. Saturated fat is not bad. It's actually very good for you. Hydrogenated fat like vegetable oils, you want to avoid those. Those are going to make your bile quality lower. They're going to make your liver struggle. They're going to cause a lot of inflammation. I'm not saying never eat them. You know, I eat them sometimes. You'll be fine. Your body's strong, but just be aware, eliminate it a little bit, cut it down. Don't have it every single day. You know, be mindful. So that includes margarine as well. Go for butter. It's way much, it's way better. And finally, one other thing you can do that's good is bitter. So anything you eat that's bitter, so bitter, uh, sour as well, to some extent, is going to help with stimulating the viral release. This is one reason that digestive bitters can be very helpful. So this is a type of supplement. But you don't need to do that. You can just have some, some, some like some bitter kale or some a, a bitter salad or something like that. Some food that is bitter is going to stimulate your digestive function and your, your bile flow. But definitely, if you're going to do it, combine it with the fat and you'll get a double benefit. And five, we've got emotional root cause. So touching on this a little bit more, we've got, we've got anger, resentment, and disgust. So these are the three primary emotions connected to the, to the gallbladder. So anger is more liver, resentment, more gallbladder, disgust is more bile. So these are all relevant in this, in this situation. So what do we do about it? So first of all, if you've got to the point where you had a surgery and your gallbladder got removed, or you're manifesting physical symptoms that are associated with these, with these emotions, you're going to have to first start on releasing from the somatic, somatic level. So the idea, so I have, I have a whole video that's all about, so you, again, William Dickinson, how to heal trauma. You can go and check that video out. I'm working on another video that's going to tell you about my Illumina method for, for healing and integrating trauma. So that's coming soon. You will be able to probably type something like William Dickinson Illumina method. I haven't made it yet, but by the time you're seeing this, there's a good chance it's already been made. So you could probably go and check that out as well. So when you're experiencing an emotion that has somatized as a physical symptom, so you've got emotions are supposed to be experienced emotionally. So you experience anger as like anger and rage and confidence and self-belief and self-trust. And resentment is like saying yes when you wanted to say no and not being able to have your have clear boundaries and you, you dwell on it and you store it and disgust. You're supposed to stay out of environments you don't like, move away from people who don't behave in a way that you seem appropriate. You may just be dis you may have disassociated from disgust you have about yourself like your house may be disgusting you might never make your bed you might not clean your teeth you might not do lots of things that are triggered by disgust like if you don't have access to these emotions consciously because you've become, you've become disidentified in some way they have the energy of the emotion has to go somewhere and it will manifest physically as a symptom inside your body instead so if i'm saying anger resentment and disgust and you're saying i'm not angry i'm not resentful I don't feel disgusted at things. That's the problem. You know, you're supposed to. And the fact that you don't is the indicator that it's somatizing and manifesting as a physical symptom inside your body instead. And if this is happening, the only way that you can start this is to work on the somatic level by feeling into your somatic, physical, visceral body and releasing these emotions from physical sensations back into emotions again. So over here, I've got the Illumina method. So again, I said, I'm going to do a video about this soon. I start with SRT. So this is somatic release technique. We're releasing the emotion back into an emotion from a somatic expression. That's the first step. Then you have to reintegrate it. So then you become aware, I'm disgusted at everything. I'm angry. I'm full of rage. I have so much resentment. Great. What the fuck do I do with it? Like That's why you put it inside your body in the first place, because you didn't know what to do with it. Then we have to reintegrate it, reintegrate it. And we can do that with a shadow work process. Again, video coming soon. Not going into, into it too much today, but maybe if you found that interesting, go, go take a look. So those are some, some good things. So now I'm going to give you some, so I've got a bonus thing I want to talk about. And we're going to talk about what we can do about if we don't have a gallbladder and some actual like actionable things that we can do. So, I mean, you'll see it in a second. So let's just start here. We're starting with the sphincter of body. So this is, this is so fascinating. This absolutely changed my life. So just here, there's a little valve. So as you can see, your, your gallbladder here, this, this big green organ up here and your pancreas, this kind of like sluggish kind of thing over here, they connect together 
into the same little little tube that enters into your small intestine. And there's a little muscle that holds it tight called the sphincter of body. And if this sphincter is stuck, like if it has a trigger point or if there's a gallstone blocking it, or if there's like a piece of food that got dislodged and moved up there, like if there's some dysfunction with the sphincter of body, it feels like you're having, it can feel like you're having a gallbladder attack and you're not. It's just because this muscle has gone into spasm. So I have had experiences where I thought I was having a gallbladder attack and you just, so you can do a massage to relax this. So you just want to lay back as, as, as calmly as you can. I'm going to, I'm going to give you a disclaimer. I'm going to say, if you've never done this before, probably get this done by a professional first so that you know what you're doing. You can find a physiotherapist or an osteopath or a chiropractor that is qualified in visceral massage. And they can do this to you. You can say, I think I have a trigger point or I think my sphincter of body is playing me up. Can you do some visceral massage on my small intestine, liver, gallbladder, pancreas? And they will look for this. And if it's there, they will, they will treat it. So as with all trigger points, you just use ischemic compression, which is basically where you, just, you push it really hard. And this can hurt a lot, which is why I'm suggesting that you get somebody else to do it. Because if this is a gallstone, you don't really want to be doing it on a gallstone. But if it is the sphincter, then you don't actually have a gallstone and you might think you're having a gallbladder attack and you have gallbladder problems and you might not even have them. You know, you might just have a sphincter of body dysfunction, which hurts a lot. I'd say it hurts just as much, if not more. Actually, the pain that is caused generally by a, a gallstone, a gallbladder attack being stuck in the tube isn't actually the, the stone being stuck in the tube. It's the muscle, the, the, the thing trying to wiggle to try and move it. It's the cramping of the, of the tube. And that's what hurts. And in the sphincter of body dysfunction, that's exactly what's happening. So even if there's no stimulus, you're getting the same kind of pain signal. You're getting the same kind of discomfort. So get somebody to see it first, see if this helps. But if like me, I know how to do this now. So I can just, I just lay back and basically just push into where this is. So you, you'll find this is, this is similar area to your gallbladder, you know, upper right quadrant, just below the rib cage, kind of just a little bit to the right of your solar plexus. And it can be really tender to the touch and you just push on, push on it really hard. You know, you'll learn the right amount of pressure if you're going to work with somebody and it can, you can have relief in literally like a matter of minutes and it is amazing and it's a game changer. And I'm, I've, I've heard of people who have had their gallbladder removed because I, I guess the surgeon thought there was something wrong with it. They take it out, no stones, nothing, no dysfunction. There was no problem at all. And it, I'm guessing in these cases, it's probably because there was sphincter of body dysfunction. So this is, this is actually very common. It's super easy to treat. You don't even have to have surgery. You just get someone to push it really hard. <laughs> so make sure you go and check somebody out and hopefully the, this is this provides you with relief. This changed my life. This was really cool. I did have gallbladder problems myself, but I also had this problem on top of that. Fixed the gallbladder problems a long time ago, but then this was a recurring issue and it made me think, oh, there's something wrong. No, there's not. It's, it was just this. So it was super easy to fix. So now we've got some ideas for you. So give that a try. Go and go and find somebody. The, the term is visceral massage. See if anybody you can find anybody that does it. So what do we do if we don't have a gallbladder? So you're going to want to take at least 30 grams of fat with every meal. I'm going to say as, as a general rule of thumb, because your, your liver is still going to have some capacity to retain bile by itself. It's still going to have the ability to hold bile inside it. So you're not going to store it and concentrate it in the gallbladder, but the liver is still able to produce some on demand and it's able to hold some inside the actual liver cells and inside those. So as you saw up here, inside these little green ducts, even if you've had the gallbladder removed, you still have these little green ducts. So you can still hold a little bit. And it's probably enough to digest about 30 grams of, of fat. So every time you have a meal, you want to drain this. You want to, you want to pull this out because... As we said before, like if you if you had your gallbladder removed, you probably weren't doing this properly in the first place. So you want to make sure you're definitely doing it. But bile is very caustic. And if it doesn't have anything to bind to, it's just going to irritate your intestines. So making sure you're having at least 30 grams of fat with every meal is really important. So it gives your bile something to bind to. Everybody is a little different. Some people are 20 grams, some people are 35. You know, you have to figure this out by yourself. But trial and error, you probably wanted to take um like actual like bile. So up here, we've got a bile supplement. So this would look like ox bile or like some kind of exogenous bile supplement. You would want to be taking this if you're ever eating a meal that has more fat. 
So say for example, your natural tolerance is about 20 grams and you can eat 20 grams of fat in a meal and you don't have any problems. But then if you eat 30 or 40 grams, you start getting symptoms of fat malabsorption. And this would probably look like, like slimy or greasy stools, stools that are floating in the toilet, um, a sheen, like an oil, oil film on the top of the toilet. That means you didn't digest the fat properly. So you need to provide extra digestive support. You can take enzymes all the time. I think enzymes are pretty safe, general, overall, pretty good supplement for an average person, especially good if you've had a some kind of gallbladder dysfunction. Again, the, lip, the lipase is really helpful in this case, but all of them can help with, with digestive function. But you want to take extra bile according to how much fat you eat extra in the meal. So if you have a really greasy meal, you know, I don't know, say you go to KFC and you have a whole bucket to yourself and you know you eat like 150 grams of fat, you're going to have to figure out how, so say your natural amount that you produce is 20, enough to digest 20 grams of fat, you're going to need to figure out how much ox bile you need to take to account for the rest of that. Otherwise, you're going to give yourself digestive problems. But if you give yourself the right amount, you will have no problems because this is a job that your body usually did automatically by itself, but it just means you have to do it manually now because that automatic mechanism of the gallbladder isn't present. You can still have the function. You just have to do it manually. That's basically all ha having the gallbladder removed is, is going to change. And you can, and you can take enzymes. So you also want to keep your bile circulating. So as I was saying, you want to make sure that you are eating 30 grams of fat with every meal because this bile is, so, you don't have anywhere to store it. So it either needs to be actively working in digestion or it's storing to the small amount that you're able to store in the liver. So keep it cycling, keep it cycling as, as much as possible. And you need to find and treat the root cause of that gallbladder dysfunction in the first place. If you have your gallbladder removed, there's a reason, you know, it's not random. There's a reason. If it's emotional, do the emotional work. If it's because of toxicity, work on detoxing that. If it's because your gut is in a mess, fix your gut. You know, you have to make sure you do these things because the gallbladder symptoms that cause the gallbladder removal, that's just an early red flag that there's something even worse, like boiling away underneath the hood. So you need to figure out what that is and fix it because having the gallbladder out alone is not going to fix the problem. It just means there's another problem waiting to come. So make sure you fix that other thing. So some recipes here. So a recipe and some, some other extra additional ideas. You can do a liver gallbladder shake. So this can be really helpful for, so this is whether you have a gallbladder or not. This can be really helpful for stimulating a bile release, helping your body to create new, new bile and helping with the, with the microbiome as well. So the ingredients here are 250 milliliters of fresh juice. You can juice whatever the hell you like. I really don't care. This is a good recipe if you've never juiced before. And this is usually something close to what I usually start my clients with. So we start with like celery or cucumber. Usually people like one or the other. So if you like celery, great. I'm, one of the, I'm a celery guy. So if you like celery, great. If you like cucumber juice, I think it's absolutely disgusting. Let me know if you think cucumber juice is disgusting because I think it is. If you like it and you're one of those weird people, then great, use cucumber instead. Put some greens in it. So this can be like lettuce, kale, cabbage, whatever it is you've got. And then lemon and ginger are really nice because they're digestive stimulant. You've got a bit of sour there. You've got a bit of that heat from the ginger. The ginger is actually quite bitter as well. So that's stimulating it too. You can also put a bit of apple in here, especially like a sour apple, like a Granny Smith or something like that. And a bit of carrot sweetener. up. You want to stick some fruit in, cool. Do, do Literally do whatever you like. As long as you drink it, it's cool. So 250 milliliters, you want to add a little bit of fat to that as well. So between 10 and 60 grams, depending on what you're going for. You know, if you're using this as a meal replacement, get the fat up, add a protein powder, you know, make it a meal. If you're doing this in between meals or you're just doing it to kind of help with the bile recycling or you just want to improve the quality of your, of your bile health, like 10, 15, 20 grams, probably fine. You can add, and um, so you have to be careful with eggs if you're like in the US or you do that weird like egg treatment. Personally, I lived in the UK and Portugal. I've eaten like 30,000 raw eggs. No problem. Never gave me an issue. So I, I personally believe eating raw eggs is safe, but I'm not from America. They do weird stuff to the eggs over there. So if you're watching from America, do your own research. Or if you're watching, if you're watching from anywhere, always do your own research with anything that I say. But you can add some raw eggs or if you're sensitive to the whites, you can just add the yolks. Um, you can add a bit of sour cream or some kind of stuff that's fermented. Sour cream is nice because it's got the saturated fat in it. It's fermented and it doesn't make it taste weird. Like if you add sauerkraut juice, probably not going to taste very nice. 
You can add a bit of apple cider vinegar as well, and you can add some protein powder. You can also add whatever you want. You know, you can add some stevia if you want to make it sweeter. You can add some raw cacao if you want to do that. You can put your B complex or whatever powdered supplement you put in there, your greens powder, whatever you like, stick it in there, blend it up, awesome. And finally, some things that you might find interesting or helpful. Apple cider vinegar is really, is like a powerhouse for this because it's got probiotics in it. It's got enzymes in it. It's acidic and, and bitter. It has malic acid from the apples, which helps break down gallstones. It's, it's a powerhouse, you know, as far as liver, gallbladder are concerned, it's amazing. It's awesome. Coffee enemas can be really helpful for the detoxification part of this. And if you have accumulated a lot of stagnant bile or you have accumulated a lot of toxicity in your body, coffee enema can be, can be great for that. The liver gallbladder flush can be helpful if you have stones, but I don't have any videos on those. And I do think they're quite harsh. So do your own research on that. It's, it's one of those things you really have to decide that you're going to do. And then maybe you'll experience it and maybe you won't do it again. Or maybe it'll be amazing for you. I've heard, I've heard it both ways. I'm, I'm on the side of, I think they're a bit harsh, but try it if you want it. If you want to give it a go, there's a, there's a, there's books you can read. There's videos you can watch, do some research on that. And finally, the castor oil pack. This can help with breakdowns, breaking down stones. It can help with um, encouraging uh, health in the liver, liver and liver regeneration. It's a really cool one. Pretty safe, very messy. Make sure that you're not wearing anything you don't want to ruin because you will ruin it. And yeah, be ready to make, make a really big mess. So takeaways from today's video. Functions of the liver and gallbladder produce bile. Bile emulsifies fats, kills pathogens, removes toxins and waste. If you had your gallbladder removed, something went seriously wrong in one of these three things or, or emotionally. So anger, resentment and disgust. If you have gallstones this is probably caused by poor bile flow so low, low stimulation or low flow excess toxicity or gut dysbiosis or resentment resentment so as we said anger resentment disgust could be an emotion there as well and it doesn't have to be one or the other it can be both it almost always is so if you're saying like oh yes i have a gut dysbiosis oh yes i know i have excess toxicity oh yes i have poor bile flow that doesn't mean it can't be resentment as well it probably both you know if you're saying yes to one of these is probably the emotion too there's almost always uh, i i want to say always but i'm not going to because i know there's like one in a hundred people that isn't but there is almost always an emotional connection to the physical problem so look for that as well because if you don't work that too you will not heal it's really important you do it as well so what do we do remove toxicity especially mindful of fat soluble toxins because fat soluble toxins come out of the bile so mold metals plastics pesticides there are others as well do your own research but they're, they're the four basics. Bile support. This is going to be different for everyone. But some things you, you might want to try are bile supplements. And that's like an ox bile, tadka, and a digestive enzyme, especially one that has lipase in it. Three, balance your microbiome. You can do this with probiotics, fermented foods, and variety in the rest of your diet. Different colors, different flavors, different aromas, and cook them in a different way as well. I missed a bracket here, so I should have put a bracket there, but oh well, no one's perfect. Four, stimulate flow. So things that are good for this, saturated fat so saturated fat looks like coconut oil it looks like your animal fats it looks like butter and ghee it looks like egg yolks you want bitter things so i don't need to tell you what bitter stuff is because you know what it is but it's it's kale it's charred it's anything you eat and it tastes bitter that's great avoid hydrogenated vegetable oils i'm not saying never have them i'm just saying reduce intake if you had your gallbladder removed though probably want to be more careful with that Five, integrate anger, resentment, and disgust. I've got one video already that you can search, how to heal trauma, William Dickinson. That will be very helpful for you. I'm also going to go make another video very soon. And when that's out, you'll be able to search Illumina Method, William Dickinson. Illumina Method, how to heal trauma, William Dickinson. Something like that. Here's a juice, liver, liver gallbladder shake that you can try. Here's a few extra things that you can take a look at. Over here, we've got the sphincter of body. So go and find a physiotherapist a chiropractor or some kind of masseuse that can do visceral massage visceral is like organs so it's like organ massage and tell them about the sphincter of body and see if you have a problem there and if you don't have a gallbladder you want to make sure that you're eating fat with every meal enough to bind all of the bile that's basically leaking into your small intestine because you don't have probably don't have the sphincter of body and you don't have a gallbladder so it's just leaking through keep that bile circulating and make sure you find and treat the root cause of that gallbladder dysfunction in the first place because it wasn't the gallbladder there was something else underneath and if you just had it removed the issue is still there so make sure you figure out what it is and fix it so 
give me some love if you like this video then I don't know, like it maybe love it share it with somebody i really take a lot of time out of my day to compile everything that i've learned over the past few years and share it with you i mean this video is however long but there's like three or four hours of work that goes into it even before the video so if you liked it like send it to a loved one that doesn't have a gallbladder send it to somebody that you know is struggling with fat digestion share it in your favorite social media groups you know the best thing you can do to help me is to just share my work so just share it i would really really appreciate that and if you have any questions leave me a comment i literally answer every single one like if you give me a good question i will definitely make sure that i answer it so leave me your questions that is everything for me today and i'll see you soon bye bye